this is a new presentation. So we're putting it together all week. It hasn't been presented before. I do have one I do for the Pink Chair Project, but this is, this is different. It's been a very interesting journey for me to look back at my art and see how it all connects. Because as I've gone, gro gone through my life, I have realized that my art knows where I'm going, and it always gets there first. <laughs> Right? And often I don't know, I tend to work in series, at least I do that now since the hit and run critic told me if I didn't do that I would never get anywhere. Um, um, and I almost never know, I know what the series might be, but I don't know what it means usually until it's all over and I'm looking at it. And sometimes I look back and it's like, wow, oh that's what that was about. Um, so. I'm going to talk a little bit about each segment, and then I'm just going to show the slides. Otherwise, if I were to talk about each slide, we'd be here two hours, and I've been told I should try to keep it to 45 minutes, so, you know, um, I can't talk about every slide. But I will tell you about the section, okay? So, um, all right, how are we going to do this? I, I think it'd be good to have the lights off. Are you ready? Yeah. And I've sort of, um, this is really about what I was just saying. Now, where do I need to talk so you all can hear me? Okay. Talk like, are you all okay? We can hear you. Okay, okay, awesome. All right. Um, I looked for quotes. The quotes helped me to put the story together. 1985, okay? Now, I just had my 70th birthday, so there was a lot going on before 1985. <laughs> but most of it involved um, growing up, going to school, becoming a mother, raising my kids. And then, around 1985, my husband and I split. And it's around the same time that my art really started to happen. In the meantime, I had done, I had actually gone back and gotten a master's degree. My master's degree was in ceramics. I would sort of back and forth between paint and ceramics most of my life. And, and when I was teaching, I would take a course in the summer or an evening course. Um, there really wasn't any way to do art while I was teaching. It just couldn't be done. But when I, when my husband and I split, everything changed with my art, and I didn't realize that until um, until I started pulling this together. Apologies to Jack London, because he wrote this with all male um, terms, like he was sounding, and I said, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> but after, after I split from my husband, one of the things I did was I got a studio with a friend who was also an artist, Mary Bloom, and I was living in Maryland at the time on the northern outskirts of Washington, D.C. And um, we shared the studio in, in Laurel in a, um, a really nice sort of a museum-like town place where you had to have your studio open on the weekends so people could come and watch the real artists at work and so on. But they had a gallery, and that's where I had my very first show that was my own show, my own work, not something I had to do for school. And that show was called Tide Lines and Fault Lines. And these are probably the worst slides of the series because these slides, I had, to, I had to transfer these slides to digital. Um, and they're very old slides to start with, and, but they're okay. So the first one, what I found was happening with these these, this series for my first show, I was really drawn to pictures like that one. This is a haystack picture up on the coast of Maine, a boreal forest, and I just kept looking at all these lines in rocks, okay? And I loved it when the ocean went back and left, um, left uh, seaweed and interesting things. So it was called Tide Lines and Fault Lines. But what it really was about, and I didn't see it till much later, was trying to find the depths of who I really am. What was my own personal bedrock? What was all this motion going on in my life all about? That's why it was so appropriate with the sign. So there was a variety of things in the show. 
segment done. The um, 1992 was not very far past 1990 when that show was. But by 1992, I had moved to Vermont. I had left all friends, all family. I took my son with me because he had no other place to go. He still hadn't packed when the moving van came. He did not want to go. Um, but I, I was really reaching out to try to figure out, um, you know, it was really about strength and I didn't know that then. But I got a studio in an apart in a townhouse. I got, rented a townhouse and I, I had a studio on the top floor and it had a small little space, sort of about as wide as that screen. And I put my easel in front of that window and for the winter I painted out that window. And that window had big trees, and that's all it had. So I started painting these big trees, and I realized later that it was really, what that was really about was gaining the, the trunks were drawing because of the strength of them. And that's what I was doing. I was regaining my strength as a human being, as a woman, being on my own, having moved off with no one else. Um, there's a second story here that during the time of the doing this work, my sister, my sister's daughter Laura was going through chemo um, and a lot of problems because of a brain tumor. At 22, she passed. She was. This was a couple years before she passed, and we were very conscious of it and I was loving her and loving my sister. So they play out in some of the, the trees in this series. So, so it's both strength in me and the strength honoring the strength in my sister. This is a bad shot, bad slide, but I love this painting and I have no idea where it is. Now a lot of these paintings are just gone. All I have is this, this little, you know, the sliding. But it was Christmas rain, this was a solid week of rain in Vermont <laughs> during the Christmas break when I could finally paint and wasn't teaching in my new job. There were all these big close-ups on trees. And this was when we found out about Laura. All of a sudden, danger, you know, on alert. It was clearly deliberately about Laura. This was not subtle to me. And then this one, I started to see the evergreen tree in the back as my sister being the watcher, being the caretaker, and Laura with her bald head being the bear tree in front dancing. So that's why this is called Dancer and Guardian. It's Laura and her mother, my sister. And then the last one in the series is this one, um, Snow Dancer in the Light, another one with um, the dancer. Now she's a snow dancer. So water rushing. That is still, I think, some of the best work I've ever done. Um, I would paint in the summers, and I was living in Woodstock, Vermont, and I would go to a spot which was on the Long Trail and the Appalachian Trail where they converged together near where 100 and Route 4 crossed. It's near Kent Pond, if anybody knows that area. And there is a waterfall in there. It was a very short walk in. And I basically parked by that waterfall for two summers. You know, I'd go in and I'd paint and I'd come out and I'd go back the next day and back. And I did a lot of pieces there. I also went up to Haystack in Maine and I did paintings of the water by the shore, the ocean tides coming back and forth. And I I also went to a place, the first one is from a place on the Connecticut River where they would sometime um, let the water loose and there'd be signs and sirens and all kinds of things when the water got loose. And this was <coughs> after, um, after I was, I'd been on my own now eight or nine, maybe ten years at, from leaving my husband. I was getting stronger 
I mean, I was pretty strong at that point, but my life was changing fast. I was dating, in, and it was like, I don't know why, the water was so active. I was drawn to this moving water, trying to make this, get this water on my canvas. And it seemed to me after the fact, when I started trying to figure it out, that it's like all these little streams are feeding the water. You know, and it's, it was the way I felt. All this little stuff was feeding me. So this is, the water may rise rapidly. That's a small pastel that was um, done at that spot on, on the Connecticut River where they will let the river go. And there were several of these where I was at the top of the waterfall. You are at the top looking down as that <coughs> water crests over. I did a whole series of these. Three of these are in my dining room. I won't sell these. They're all pastels. And some of the water ones were done up in Johnson when I was up there at the studio center. That's a place with a pit and run critic, by the way. <laughs> but not that time. It was another time I was there. <laughs> these are oils. <coughs> that one a lot. The way that brilliant sun comes down and reflects on the water in the summer. <coughs> and I like this little pastel a lot too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like little pastel, just so alive. This is the work, by the way, that got me into the North Shore Art Association, mm -hmm. the series. Um, very difficult place to get into as an artist, so it's, I consider it you know, the most important ones I belong to, and I'm having a show there in the fall. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. What also happened around the time of the water, just about when the water was over, is I met my current husband, Tom. And we, um, we fell in love very quickly. We bought a house in the country in Thetford. Um, and for two years, I didn't paint, I gardened. Um, but I also was worried that I would, the big thing that worried me about getting remarried was would distractions of my husband, um, that we were together a good two years before we actually married, all right? And I was afraid the distractions of my husband, not that he would do it deliberately, but I would withdraw from the art. And it turned out that he was so supportive he was still there for me every single day with my art, that my art really, really grew tremendously. So it was the exact opposite of what I worried about. And that is the year I did the famous figure in Bloom. I had a show coming up in the fall. I joined a group of artists in Lebanon that were going to have a show. We had to do something that had to do with seasons or the square in Lebanon, New Hampshire. I didn't have any feeling for the square, so I thought about seasons and decided that I needed to do something that would get me in the studio every day, and I took on a huge challenge of painting 365 paintings of flowers. Those flowers have become the, the gift cards I still sell today. Um, they, they have, you know, just been amazing. Not all of them, I've sold a lot of them, I still have more for sale, but, but um, obviously a lot of them have never seen the light since the day they were <laughs> at, one, at the show, they were all tacked up in the hallway. And I sold a few from there, and some were framed in the main room, but they were all up. But after I took them down, there's a lot of them are just sitting in a box. So trust me, they, they weren't all the ones I made the cards from. But um, it, was, it was love that did this. You know, love that did this. And these are... Well, these are whatever, it had to be something real. It was, they were in my garden, or I found the delightful joy of going and purchasing something at a florist or the grocery store and being able to deduct it, you know? <laughs> um, you probably, most of you have seen my cards and a lot of you have bought my cards or, you know, you probably recognize some of these images. First time I made cards from them was with the holiday cards, I have like eight or nine images with the holiday cards. It's the last thing I'll say about that series, but um, it was a very, very broke time in my life. I had a studio maid who now is in North Carolina in Nashville, and she's one of these incredible supportive people who when you see her no matter <coughs> what, you leave feeling fabulous. I don't know how she can do that. 
but she does it every single time. And I had heard about people doing this. Um, they're, they're what they are, and they're not expensive prints because I couldn't sell them at card prices that they were. They're, they're colored copies. I have to spend a lot of time at the copier to adjust, make adjustments because they don't know how to do it there. But um, it still costs money to do that, and I didn't have money. And I came into my studio one day, and there was a check for $25 from her, and she said, you need to do this. This is for you to make some prints, to make some cards, to move ahead. And that, that support from her meant so much to me. And I went ahead and did it, and then you can see how long that story's gone on. After I finished these, I did a second year of florals, and then I had a show with it, I called it Fresh Bloom. And these were all much larger pieces, complicated pieces, pieces done over multiple days or even a month in the studio, um, but always from live flowers, okay? Um, so here are some of those pieces. And when I had the show, I put them, mixed them with, with the, what I had that was framed from the year of bloom. So they were both the smaller ones and the larger ones. This is a cool piece. It's not the best slide of it, but it was a passion flower. It had both the top and the bottom of it. So I, when I had two paintings, and I'd like to hang them like this, because the flower was just so big, you couldn't get it all in one hand. <laughs> one of the spring ones, and one of the three real big ones, spring bloom, and then anemones and freesia, another one of the big ones. These are 30 by 40. And then the final one in the series is um, Pink Bouquet, 36 by 36. A lot of flowers in that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, move ahead to 2010. We had to jump a ways. Um, what took so long in there is I, well, my husband got a job in Massachusetts. I was still teaching in Vermont. We had three years of him coming home weekends. And then I got a job down here as an administrator in art. I was working in Cambridge in charge of the art program there. And I worked there two years, then they laid me off. Then I worked in Waltham for four years doing both art and music, and they laid me off. So 2010, November 2010 was a very, very difficult time for me, as you might imagine. All of a sudden, okay. And I knew with the economy, there was going to be no getting another job in administration. Nobody was hiring arts administrators. No one would hire an art teacher with 30 years experience, because I know I couldn't hire anybody like that when I was hiring art, art teachers. There, we have limits what we can do. There was going to be no more job in art education for me. And um, so I said, okay, I'm going to take everything I've learned as a teacher and as an administrator, and I'm going to put it into being an artist full time. I will use that to learn how to run my art business. One of the problems was, again, the total <laughs> disclosure here is because I had actually had six years of active teaching in Massachusetts, and I had two years that I could buy from when I was in Virginia, I was still two years short of enough uh, years to best in the Massachusetts retirement system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wound up without the money that I expected to get from Massachusetts to add to my retirement. So I came into my retirement with a significant drop in my income, and I said I have to make my art pay. So. That's why I've worked so hard at it. You guys know me. You know how important it's been to me. Uh, my studio is always open. I have, I'm painting like mad, you know, and so on. Um, but I had to heal from all that, okay? And there's two stages of my art which helped me to heal. And one of them was um, 2010. I might be mixed up on that, because this was after that all happened, all right? And I thought it happened, with, maybe it was 2009 that it all happened. But I basically just took off and went on the road, and I started painting everywhere. I stayed in friends' places. Um, I stayed in, in North Carolina. I stayed in Vermont. I stayed in Maine. I did a lot of just 
going and sitting in a place and painting. And I think that, you know, the quote there, travel far enough, you meet yourself. I had to figure out who the hell I was now. I no longer had my identity as um, an art educator. Okay, I'd been painting in summers and stuff, but I don't know, you know. So, so here's some of the things from, from the series. I have a lot of paintings from that time. I'm just gonna throw, show you a couple. With Franklin, North Carolina, a lovely place out about uh, 45 minutes from Asheville near the Kentucky and um, Georgia borders. This is the porch. I stayed at the um, house that my husband's music person, who he has a, a singing group from college that meets once a year. Doc Fisher, Doc Fisher is his name, and he, he lives in this house. And I had his house, I had the run of his house for a week. They, they went somewhere else. And I sat on that porch all day long when I wasn't painting. I got up, I read, I um, wrote in my journal, I went and I cooked for myself, I came out, I painted, I sat down, I read and wrote in my journal. I wrote in my journal at least three times a day while I was trying to put that all together in my life. I love those rocking chairs. Here's a painting that I think Anne might recognize. <laughs> um, this is from Plymouth Notch in um, Vermont where Calvin Coolidge's birthplace, that little brown building to the left with the biggest red chimney is actually the room he was born in. Mm -hmm. um, this is from Rockport. The fellow was tied, got really low, and I all of a sudden I realized what he was doing was painting his boat. Or mm -hmm. it. He was painting his boat. I thought he was scrubbing it, but all of a sudden yeah. the red on the bottom disappeared. It was blue. <laughs> he was painting it. Yeah. This is up um, Cape Corpus. It was up in Maine for um, another thing, and, and I did some around Cape Corpus. So that's just an example of the things I was painting as I was traveling around. Now, the very starting actually that fall, um, Coastal Sunrise came to be. Um, several people in this room have actually been to the house I was staying in well I did the Coastal Sunrise series and it was so it was right after the travels one that I did it and then all that winter I painted paintings from the photos I took um, I'm just going to read this but this was the artist statement from my show Coastal Sunrise which was in Marblehead Art Association and it sort of tells you where, I, how I was feeling at this time. Um, what I learned from Coastal Sunrise, I thought it was about the water, but it was about the sky. And it was about the endless series of opportunities I now have. You know? It wasn't an ending, it was a beginning. Okay? Look up. Up I can see forever. The sky is never as big as it is over the sea. I look down, sand, rock, and the cool water around my ankles bring me back to now. The new day sky marked by the most brilliant colors, far too much to contemplate in its hugeness. My smallness, whoops, my smallness is comforting, my smallness is frightening. So I bend down, touch a shell, stone, or feather, then look up again. I pick up the brush and paint and I'm transported far beyond myself to what is deepest and whole. I bring the sky inside. <laughs> These are the ones I did right there off the porch. I was in, you know, Johnny's um, coffee place. This was Johnny's cottage I was in, in Maine, at Goose Rocks Beach, and he had a glassed in porch. And I got up every morning by 6 a.m. I was up with my paintbrush in hand. And I did these small pieces, they're 10 by 10. There's still a lot of them over at the studio, but they're going down to Lark Rising Gallery pretty quickly. But, um, so I did a bunch of these while I was there. I also did that Cape Corpus one we saw earlier. And then I went back to the studio in the winter and I work from photos to do bigger ones. So these are some of the ones I did in the winter in this series. This is a series from which I've sold the most paintings. Yeah, they're just, you know, I think that whatever is going on, it goes in the paintings 
And I think everybody has a sense of fabulousness when you're at the sea of the sky. <laughs> you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, you can see it. And they're, they're also, you know, attractive pieces. But that one's three feet square. Mm -hmm. This is the only one that well, there were a couple I showed that were not actually at that location, but I love this one. This is at Poppin Beach where the water, the air, the weather was changing right in front of me. Very cool. So I Pink chair. Most of you know me for pink chair. Um, the show was in May at Marblehead of 2011 and in June 5th my mother passed. And a day after I got back from my mother's funeral, I unpacked and repacked my car to go to Maine for a planned painting trip. Um, so while I was there, the people there had a pink plastic Adirondack chair and some tan ones too. They matched the shutters of their house. <laughs> and I, when I got myself together to start painting, which I had to because I had promised <coughs> them a painting in exchange for the accommodations. <laughs> you know, you, you have to do something if you want to get these houses in beautiful places to yourself. You have to do something. So, um, at any rate, uh, but when I, the first painting I put the chair, well actually the second one, it was a little preliminary one, but the first painting I put the chair in where I really thought about it, I said, boy, my mom would love that color pink. She just loves that pink. And when I started painting that painting, I felt my mother's presence in the chair. And it was no doubt to me she was there. Um, and then I, I talked to her. I, I ran around putting the chair in all these different places, taking photos of them. Like, this is one of the photos I took at in Rochester, which is my hometown, and so on. So that whole pink chair by the show, by the way, is still traveling. It's 13 stops. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in Amesbury at the Provident Bank downtown right now. And then in May, it's going to Life Rising Gallery, my gallery in Rockport. And then it's going to Exeter Hospital. And then in, in September, it will be done. And we'll never be together again. So if you want to see, if you can make a point to see one of those stops, um, there are five paintings are sold for people that some people have been waiting as long as two and a half years to get a painting. Um, anyway, so here's some. I chose the ones to show you that have flowers in them. Okay, but there's some others. I mean, there's 22 paintings. This was the one I used on the. Um, the invitation to the show, the first um, the first place it was, which was the Topsfield Library. And just to tell you, every one of these has a story. I have a um, I have a website now for it. It's a permanent home for the pink chair project. All the stories and all the paintings are on the website. I forgot to get them out. I will. I have brought cards with the website. <coughs> and also my regular business cards, so you can take them with you, and also cards for my gallery in Rockport, Rock Rising, so all three of those have different websites. But, um, I mean, this is, to me, what memory is like, this remembrance. The chair is there, but it's reflected, okay? You don't really see it at first. It's like our memories of our loved ones. We've all lost somebody. When we lose somebody, our memories start to shift from real sharp memories of this and that. Things that were in the background start to come forward. Things that we thought were important before kind of go by the side. And, and that's what happens. Memories are a little bit shifting that way. And that's really what that means about. This is uh, one I did early. Um, didn't have it in the background then. I put it in at the last minute because I had, um, I'm just about it a half an hour now, so I think I've got a little bit more time, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more of these stories. Um, the This one was done, I, I started painting this painting, and I had to stop because it was raining, and then um, the um, when I went back to finish, it was like something took a hold of my paintbrush. Energy came through me and it did, as I did that tree. And that tree is a very strong, powerful tree. And I didn't know why, but I just set it aside. When I was getting ready for the show, I said, this painting seems to belong, but I don't know why. 
And I realized it really, it was the day before I had had the event where I felt my mother's presence. I said, she was there. She's the one that helped me with that paintbrush. And she was in the background waiting to be heard. And so that's why I put it in the show and I put it in there. This is called Visiting. This is um, at my sister's former house. Um, she has since split from her husband, so she's not there anymore. But this was the memorial pond for Laura. A little lovebird sculpture there on the left. There are some butterfly symbols, which was Laura's symbol. So it's called Visiting, but it's really Mom visiting Laura. This one is called Conversation, and um, it uh, was the, the sky was half done from Coastal Sunrise, and I hadn't finished it, and I said, this is going to be my way to show Mom Coastal Sunrise, because she obviously, she was only a, a month before she passed, she was not able to see that show. So I finished the sky part, I put the chair in there, I turned the chair the other way and painted it the other way and put the foreground in from a photo, gave each chair a coffee cup, and he sit right down there, and sitting right down there showing them um, the things that she missed. Mm -hmm. This one um, is from um, Long Hill Gardens in Beverly, and the day I was there, it was um, the first day the lotus had bloomed. The guy came out and told me, he says, you're lucky, it's the first day the lotus has bloomed. But I thought it really looked like Mom was meditating over there in the, in the greenery. This one is called Hidden Treasures. Uh, Mom was just an everyday housewife kind of person. Nobody knew her outside of her own little circle, but everybody that knew her loved her. She would become, I told her when she moved to a senior residence, I said, you'll be mayor of that place within, you know. <laughs> you know within, within two weeks when people discovered that she knew all the card games and she could play in the hands for everybody that needed somebody, she didn't mean, you know, she was. Um, but there's several things there. There's, there's a little pump in the foreground. The chair's partially hidden, but there's also a, a bird feeder and the copper thingy there in the background. So all kind of hidden treasures. So there are, like I said, 22 of these, and they all have a story. And you can read them all online, and you can see them in person nearby if you want to. Um, the other st stories to come, I don't know yet. There's some recent florals here. Um, I'm just throwing extra florals in because they're, they're some recent pieces I've done and because we like flowers here at the garden club. So I thought I'd show you some. There's, I do a lot of other work. I realize there's a lot of pieces I have that don't fit into other series somehow. <laughs> but, you know, I can't show you everything. You'd be here till tomorrow morning. So there, is it, you know, there's resemblance to the previous one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, white orchids. Now this is this painting was sold just yesterday. Okay. <laughs> just sold yesterday. This is um, the Song Garden. Have anybody seen the Song Garden in New Hampshire, in Cornish, New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. Did you know where <coughs> Augustus St. Gaudens home site is? Mm -hmm. This is about a half a mile from there, just up the road. You pass St. Gaudens and you go to the Song Garden. Now, the Song Garden <laughs> is a public garden done privately. You can just go in there and pick your own and leave a donation. And then there is also a tea house. And the tea house used to be the studio for one of the uh, Cornish colony artists. It used to be the studio. So they have that information on the door and they've made that into a little serve yourself tea house and leave a donation. There's books and there's cookies and there's beautiful china and flowers and all kinds of things in the tea house. And um, two days ago, I got an email from the owner of the garden who said she found a picture online and she wanted to buy it. <laughs> so I'm going to take it to her on Saturday. <laughs> Very happy about that sale. And she's going to, um, we negotiated about her ability to use it um, for um, advertising purposes for the garden. And I gave her a very good price on that aspect of it, with the, with the, with, on the condition that she uses my name every time she ever, you know, she uses it like that, or, you know, maybe by the children. With a copyright thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've got to write that up yet, but we'll be taking a turn on Saturday. 
Um, this one has been sold at the North Shore Art Association. This one is a companion piece from the Saw Garden. Just a wonderful place to visit. You just wander in and pick flowers. Just wonderful. <laughs> can't not have them. And here's some little guys. It's just little guys. Um, trying different things. Butter, little buttercups and a birdie. And this one is a gate I found on Martha's Vineyard that I'm just going to do um, this is the North Shore Art Association where I'm going to have my show in October. <coughs> and um, if you you um, make sure, I don't, he didn't bring a mailing list here, but if you're, if people are normally getting my information, I'll certainly let you know. Um, anybody else can just take my card and send me an email and I'll put you on the list. Um, but the new work that is, I'm going to show some selections from Big Chair, it's a big room. <laughs> but the, um, the new work that I'm showing is primarily the working waterfront. I've been drawn to that for a long, long time. And I've been going to Maine for a long time. And so I've been doing working waterfront stuff, sort of like stuff on the dock, stuff around the dock. So not as much the boats, but the landscapes or things happening. This one is very large. It's three feet square. Um, the lobster traps on the left. There's some pallets. Wooden, those are wooden, the brown is wooden pallets. Those are the, um, um, I forget what they call them, but they take the bait out in those big containers, the blue and the red striped one. This is right now probably my, still my favorite from the new work, which is called Checking the Traps. And one of the rare pieces that I have people in. I don't generally do people. This is called Port Clyde Refuel. It's under the dock in Port Clyde where the boat was out for my beacon and the sun was hitting this little shed and I wondered for a long, long time, what are those blue and red things? I asked everybody I knew that had boats and worked around and said nobody, I had so many different guesses, but I finally went back to Port Clyde the next year found somebody on the dock and said, what are those things? <laughs> and they actually are water hoses. The blue is the water hoses. And the red is like something to keep them from getting kicked up when they're under the tide. Um, and the green is um, gasoline. And then there's, or is the green diesel. I don't, one is gas and one is diesel. You know, there's only one of them there. I forget which is which. Um, that's another big one. This is a acrylic. Not, I don't do too many acrylics, but I really like this piece. Um, it's, it's again, it's a main scene. All right. This is um, very recent. Um, friendship, Town Harbor. I love Friendship. If you haven't been in Friendship, it's a wonderful place. It's certainly your rustic old town stuff. And this one is so fresh, it hasn't been signed yet. Um, it's 30 by 40. It's a large one. It's not the best color here <coughs> for the real one. You've got to come in this pop yeah, in the studio if you like to you see You've got to see that one for real. That's yeah. You've got to see that one for That's all. really, mm -hmm. it yeah. looks a lot better on the computer. I don't know why that has to look so bad up there, but there's a lot more orange on it. And um, yeah, it's, it was quite interesting. It, it talks to you when you walk into that room. Yeah. <laughs> it's really something. Um, this is the last painting I'm going to show you, and I, I'm really trying to, this is the problem now. I've learned, you know, there's always a story or something. <laughs> <laughs> and if I get too, too, you know, cocky about it, see, I know what the story is. Well, you know I'm going to be wrong. It's going to be something else. But I kind of think that what I'm doing now has to do with dealing with aging. Um, all the things I'm drawn to are things that are old, well used, and absolutely beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>